guys welcome back to another episode of singaporean talks money so today i'm going to talk about my q3 portfolio updates and where am i at right now in terms of that so this year has been a crazy year as daily news are not positive and we seem to be living in bad news i'm grateful to be in singapore where we are so far not as badly affected as the others many have suffered and i do hope for the best and for recovery china has broadened its lockdowns and the energy crisis is affecting europe as well as china as hydropower in china was not working as expected due to a drought extreme weather conditions are also affecting countries as flood droughts and heat waves made headlines ending quarter three means that we will be entering winter in Europe and other parts of the world. Winter means that more energy will be needed to keep warm, so demand is definitely going to be up, but the supply might not be able to keep up. Stocks and crypto markets have also been affected, as macro environment is having so many bad news, with inflation still high and the Fed being aggressive with rate hikes. People do want to have more cash on hand to pay bills and make sure they have sufficient funds. We do also see a number of tech layoffs, although job reports are still pretty strong in numbers. But a number of companies have cut headcounts and are looking to reduce hiring, most recently being Meta. I think even the bonus at my company looks to be low as we expect revenue to drop substantially. Of course, certain industries are more affected than others, but let's dive into my portfolio review. So for this, uh, I record the holdings in my stocks, portfolio, Scythe, Read Plus, and cryptocurrency holdings. So overall, my portfolio definitely has seen a drop, and we can see that uh, crypto markets are performing badly, although there was the ETH merge in August, September, but I think the price fluctuation was within a small range. My overall portfolio value has dropped, but I am adding positions and still dollar cost averaging monthly. I've reduced my crypto um, top up amounts as I increase the dollar cost averaging towards stocks. Um, currently, I can really see a lower interest in cryptocurrency as in due to the drop in value. Um, so I do see lesser tweets on my Twitter feed. Uh, for example, less, sh less shilling, less information sharing. Although it could also just be the people that I'm following who have stopped uh, updating and taking a break. Yeah, so I also do see many crypto enthusiasts uh, taking a break and just like reducing their screen times. So for stocks, across the portfolio, um, we can see that stock and cryptos have dropped and even the Singapore dollar against US dollars have uh, dropped but Singapore dollar is still holding on pretty well compared to other currencies. For me, I think uh, as all of you know, Tesla is my largest holding and it did have a 3 for 1 stock split in August and it's about 60% of my portfolio. I'm trying to lower the proportion by allocating more of my dollar cost averaging amount towards ETFs, mainly QQQ and VOO. I still very much believe in the innovation and growth of Tesla, but I think I just want to balance up my portfolio to reduce the volatility. Nothing really much to add about stocks as I'm just dollar cost averaging into index ETFs. For cryptocurrencies, it's crazy how the drop for Bitcoin and ETH was horrid <laughs> So scary in that it was a nose dive from 60,000 for BTC and 4,000 for ETH to the current levels. The volatility is crazy high. And when it becomes a slightly green day, it seems such a happy moment, even if it's just slightly positive. We do see a little recovery for Bitcoin as we see fiat currencies around the world drop in a value against the US dollar from euros to british pounds and i do believe people are seeing bitcoin as a store of value although they might be in with small amounts first the ethereum merge also happened and it was interesting 
watching the live and how the community was so happy for it and the amount of hard work everyone did to move it from proof of work to proof of stake. So for cryptocurrencies, I'm adding in really small amounts as I think my proportion um, of it in my portfolio is sufficient at the moment and I want to focus on building up my stocks. So on to the exciting things, I'm starting a Scythe Read Plus portfolio for cash flow um, and mainly for retirement where I will inject about $300 in monthly. I was first interested in it after reading a few articles from Turtle Investor. I would say that I was deciding between SRT or Scythe Read Plus and since I will be buying in small amounts, I would think that Scythe Read Plus is definitely easier to maintain and use. SRT also charges a management fee of 0.8% while for Scythe Read it charges a tier fee system where the lowest tier is charging 0.65% per year. So another thing is the uh, payout frequency. For Scythe Read it is quarterly whereas for SRT it is semi-annually. So for September I've started with about $1,300 and following months will be adding about $300 or $350 and this is mainly building up for retirement and at some point I might stop injecting any more fresh capital and instead just reinvest the dividends. Of course this is not really like fixed and the amount I'm putting in will fluctuate. Uh, I'll be showing you a table of how I am planning to structure my uh, inputs and then how it will eventually build up over time of course definitely right now i'm 27 years old and you can see in 2023 i'll be 28 and so on and so forth so um, let's see the portfolio for q3 2022 of course i'm not expecting any miracles for the remaining months of 2022 and 2023 but I'm just recording right now the numbers and for me to look back in future. You can see that for October, I usually record this on the first day of every month. There has been a drop compared to September in terms of my total portfolio. So let's move on and talk about job security. I do have to say that I'm worried about my job security at the moment as I'm in an industry that has seen significant layoffs. And I think it will get worse going into 2023. The Fed looks determined to curb inflation and wants the general public to tighten their belts, which would in turn affect some companies' revenue. So I think it is pretty scary thinking about the future at the moment. I'm worried, but I understand that I shouldn't worry too much as there is nothing much I can do except to do my job well, update my managers, and if anything happens, then I will have to look for a new job. I do have emergency funds, but to be honest, no amount can prepare you for a loss of job. And I feel that I'm at a level where I would lose a significant chunk of cash flow, and especially so when I'm building up my portfolio and losing your main source of income can hurt. So let's talk about going into Q4 2022. Q4 2022 will be interesting as we will see more interest hike as well as entering the festive period and we can see how it goes, whether it will affect any consumer behaviour in terms of inflation, spending habits and end of year is usually a time to reflect as well and 2022 has definitely been a happening year and there's lots to reflect on as we go forward and become another year older I'm happy to have a plan and will stick to it unless anything happens. So how has your portfolio for Q3 2022 been? And what are your plans or goals for the coming Q4? Thank you. Do remember to subscribe and like my videos.